What's going on guys? My name is Austin Hargett, AKA Dr. Welds, and I'm here with Ray Ripple on the couch uh, here in Houston, Texas with Outlaw Worldwide. Uh, today we're gonna talk about a little bit of plasma cutting. So Ray, you are the artist behind plasma cutting, if you ask me nowadays. So you got a lot of a lot of people looking at what you've got going on. People are amazed by all the stuff that you're doing. And it's all you're doing is with that one little plasma cutting, just hours and hours just in your mind and on that on that piece of uh, equipment or whatever it may be that day that you're cutting on. Yeah. So give the people a little bit of uh, advice on what do you think about setting up a plasma cutter? Like, what's the first thing you need to do? So, first things first is it's practice. So that's all it is, practice. That's like one of the number one questions that I always get is like, how did you fine tune your skills in plasma cutting? Because when I cut, it looks like shit. It's practice, that's all it is. It's just practice, practice, practice. What you see on my Instagram is seven years of just locking myself just away in stuff. the shop and just cutting everything. Cutting away. And that's a lot of uh, a lot of what I do and, and transfer to my students. Uh, this welding, this welding industry, they want to know what what is the tips, what is the best way to get started. And, and I believe that it's just repetition. Yeah. Do it again. Do it again. Over do and it over again. And, and if over. you do it over and over and over again, you're going to end up coming out with a slick welder, that straight cut with no dross on it and things like that. Mm -hmm. So as far as getting a plasma cutter, what all do you need? It's not like an oxy's uh, fuel setup where all you need is a, a couple gas bottles and a torch. You need a couple more things with the plasma cutter. Well, yeah. it's just the plasma cutter and it's just air. Right. And you need good quality air, otherwise your cuts are going to look like shit, right. you know, that kind That's of thing. Crucial. So crucial. Yeah, it's crucial. very crucial. especially Don't want when that wet air in there. Oh, yeah, especially running a CNC machine. Any right. kind of contaminant in your, in your air, Ooh. it like just shuts everything down. You, you tell me, I, I know that, uh, I know that you've got the fast cut four by eight table. I've got a Langmeyer little two by four table myself. Mm -hmm. So we both have, uh, I'm, I know you know the troubleshooting behind that kind of stuff. Oh, it's yeah. so frustrating. You're, you're trying to figure out why your machine, your uh, table just got locked up and now it's cutting like trash and it just ruined a whole piece of steel. Oh, I know. A whole oh, piece dude, of steel is in the them. trash. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I cut this sign for a tall city brewery in Midland, Texas. And it was the first time I ever, way. thank you. That was the first cut I ever done like on a CNC like that I owned outside of it. Cause before that, the only CNC I ever used I was like, fuck, I can literally do this faster by hand. And all the troubleshooting, but it seems like with plasma cutters, is just the littlest little things. You're it's, you're it's not screwed on tight yeah. enough. It might've gotten loosed up while it's spinning around mm -hmm. or moving. Something you might've forgot to turn on the air compressor, but it still had some in the, in the line mm -hmm. or, or, me, I just forgot to press the CNC button on my on my <laughs> plasma cutter, so yep. it goes and starts and makes a mess up, and uh, again, or it says sorry, arc voltage lost, and you're like trying to figure it out, and all I ever have to do, like 90% of the troubleshooting, is just take the torch out and then screw the tip, like, or just, blow it out just, and then just, screw it back on. Just, yeah, just like a, like an old freaking Nintendo Nintendo 64, just pull it out. <laughs> Yep. And for whatever dumb reason that was. Dry runs. I fully, fully suggest always doing a dry run first. Right. And then, you, of course, you got different types of metal. Uh, mm -hmm. They cuts different. Yeah. Right? Everything cuts different. Copper cuts different than aluminum. Aluminum cuts different than stainless. Stainless cuts different than carbon. Yep. Right. So you've got to kind of fine tune your settings. And again, YouTube, by all means, is your Oh is yeah, your I'm, key, I'm right? a YouTube welder. That's how I learned everything. Everything is off of YouTube. It's I mean, just it's the way to go practice. nowadays. Oh that's, yeah. That's it. Dude, there's so much information that's out there for us on YouTube and that's just how I got started. But I also started in the industry when women weren't really in the industry at all. And I just wanted to turn my art from something you hang on a wall to 3D. And so yeah, YouTube was where it was at. Yeah, and that plasma cutter, uh, it really lets you get really creative with it because mm -hmm. it's you're not putting as much heat into the part. You're able to kind of, well, you, you wear all your sweatpants and your <laughs> Weird glove. You really don't wear any kind of proper PPE now, do you, Miss Ray? You should always wear PPE. Do as I say, not, not as, as I, I do. Not as I do. Right? So yes. you also want to have all your PPE like any other day. Like before, when I when I worked in pressure vessel shops and I'm cutting two inches thick of stainless steel, right? Mm -hmm. That plasma cutter is not like the plasma cutter that you have in your garage. It's about that big around and it's setting up to 200 some yeah. odd amps and it is just 
blowing through. If you don't have your proper PPE on, you're gonna end up you're hurting yourself. You're gonna get yourself. burned, yeah. <laughs> and here's a, here's a fun fact. Never, if you're trying to pierce a hole in a piece of steel, never look directly down. Cause it'll shoot back up at your face. <laughs> it's gotta take time to get through that piece of metal, right? You know how many, I've been doing this for how long and I still make that mistake and I still, I catch, I actually just got my first welding cap today. I've never owned a welding cap. So maybe now it'll save moment. my hair. Yeah. from being burned every time i look down it's like sprays me right in the face so. so the trick to that is one really when you're piercing a hole with a plasma I cutter angle it. it yeah i usually angle it angle it just a hair so that that metal comes in and out and away from you instead yeah. of looking down the barrel and getting a face full of slack 100 right that sucks um but that's the beauty of a plasma cutter. It does is able to cut all those different yep. materials, whereas a cutting torch oxy fuel is limited to mm -hmm. your carbon steel. And there's so many cool tips that like uh, Hypertherm that they provide, like the fine cut consumables. I love them because I can really get like a super, super light cut versus like with a regular drag tip where you have that pretty deep cut, you get something super right. fine. Right. And you got different tips on those into those plasma cutters. Yep. You got ones that you can just lay on there and drag, and you got some that you do have to kind of manipulate oh, yeah. yourself. Now, Hypertherm, you mentioned Hypertherm. Hypertherm, yeah. I believe to be the, one of the best oh, in the business. Oh, 100% hands down, best in the business. And it's not just because I like I run with them. Like it literally is the best in the business. Oh, right, it's expensive. It is. Hypertherm is on the higher end. So if you were, if you were to be a budget welder and you're trying to get your first plasma cutter, what would you recommend? What, what few tools do you think you, you need? Like you said, you need a compressor, right? How big of a compressor? Well, when I first started, I started with a small, like I think it was like a 20 gallon or 25 gallon. It or, worked though. Yeah, oh, it did. It I, I, ran, I ran that with a Miller Spectrum 2050. It's about 20 years old. So it's literally like two days older than Jesus. <laughs> and uh, it like, I rode that thing hard and put it up wet. I worked, I, that was like my good solid machine. It's a horse. What did it's you a, say? It's a horse term. You were in Texas. <laughs> Come on now. When you ride a horse, you ride it hard. Oh, I heard whore. So horse, horse. I'm whore. sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. So I, 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 I worked that machine to death, and then finally it just started falling apart. And but mind you, this was a 20 year old machine. So Miller built a machine that lasted 20 years on this planet of being like just put through hell. So that was my first setup was that. And uh, when I transitioned into hypertherm, like it was a totally, totally different ball game. Just smooth, smooth butter, sailing, like smooth sailing, right? Butter. It's now, insane. myself, whenever I got started with my plasma cutter, uh, I couldn't afford a, a hypertherm, right? I went with the Everlast. Everlast has a, a couple different levels of plasma cutters for You know, I've never used Everlast. Thicknesses. The only other one that I've ever used is the Aesop one, and I didn't, I don't really like that one very much. I enjoy but, my Everlast. It's the 52i. It cuts up to 50 amps. It cuts mm -hmm. up to half inch steel. Now, if I am cutting half inch steel, I am working that thing, and it is going to hit a duty cycle mm -hmm. at some point. So I never really get up to there. That's something for a, a bigger, bigger piece of machine to do, but that, that 52i, and my Husky uh, 30 gallon air compressor. Yep. That's all I needed, right? And that's a Home Depot buy, Everlast is fairly I had one affordable. of those one, the little tiny ones, the four right. ones, that's what it was. I think that's like a, what, a 20 gallon? It's no, that, those, I think those are like 10. Yeah, 10 I think it was 12. like a little 10 gallon, but the only thing is like every time I cut, I have to wait till it filled up. Wait till it filled up and then do it again. Wait till it fill up and do it again. So eventually I've upgraded to like a lot bigger, bigger tank. But as far as like suggestions on what equipment to buy, like if I was you, if you can buy secondhand equipment that's slightly used, you know, go for the good brands just because Absolutely. you don't want to waste money on plasma cutters that are going to blow up. Like me, I run them so hard that like I've, I've literally trashed two Aesop ones, like immediately, like within the same day. So, I'm just saying, if you're gonna, if you want good quality- No shade on Esau no, or anything. No shame but. on Esau, but um, if you want good quality cuts and, and, and like just a good machine that's not gonna let you down, like I've been running that 45, the Hypertherm 45 that I have for about three years now. And when I say, I mean, y'all see my work, like I put those machines through hell. Yeah, you are all over all those- And it's- uh, Your table and between your table and all the big pieces of art that you make, man, they're- they get, their, they get their use too. And yeah. like the hypertherm also doesn't eat up consumables the right. way that some other plasma cutters do. Like whenever I cut up a car, it usually takes me two consumables. Right, and we also got to think about what kind <clears throat> of metal you're cutting, how thick. Yeah. So if you're not going to want to buy a, a 52 or something like that mm -hmm. or a 32 uh, if you're cutting thick stuff. If you know you're going to cut half inch steel often, you're going to need mm -hmm. to bump up that. Amp. Oh yeah. 
for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. But great talk. Learned yeah. a little bit from you. I hope you know every, it was a good talk. Yeah, good talk. So yeah, uh, good yeah. Talk. on yeah, the couch, sure. yeah. we're here talking. Me and Ray yeah, together, just right drinking now. some yeah. drinking some beers. Here we are. Cheers. Yeah, good stuff. Mm-hmm.